Um, my question more so is about how you handled all the backlash from his fans, the trolls, the comments, you know, the accusations they were trying to make about your daughter and abusing your daughter, all this stuff, this bullshit. Oh, abusing, how do you deal with abusing, it? Abusing, yes. Abusing, oh, yeah. oh my god. Uh, I just, I just look at it like. When I look at when they say it, I always click on their profiles. They look like 14, 15, 16 year old kids that haven't got a clue, would never say anything to your face in real life. And they're just riding Daddy Aoli's cock. Well, maybe he's, they're fingering his vagina more like it because he's a fucking pussy. Let's move into I want your take on it's a little bit, a few weeks old, uh, Tony Burton and Raphael kind of beef. And, um, you know, first off, like, who do you think should have won that show? Based on what you saw, video, photos. From what from my videos and photos, like I said, it's not the greatest judge, but from what I saw on that, I probably would have given Tony the edge. Okay. Yeah. No, no. Something uh you said or, or he said about you or oh it was about the racism thing. It was about something being racist or Rich Piano racist or it was vice versa. I remember I oh, yeah, there there's something that recorded about him being racist, but yes. I don't think I was against him. I, I, I think I was defending him. It's like, you know, what he yeah. said wasn't good, but I, I said who hasn't in the heat of the moment probably been with a friend or someone? We've yeah. all used racist terms or told racist jokes. Shit, Paul and I used to go back and forth telling racist jokes because Paul was just funny. And I'll be like, doesn't that offend you? He's like, no, he goes, I'm not that. The N word, he goes, yeah. I'm a black Canadian. I'm not, I'm not an N person. In my latest documentary, I asked that question to a few people, Dalette yeah. and Melvin Anthony. They're like, what? Lee racist. Melvin's like, when I had nothing, Lee took me into his place and gave me all his food and this and that. Paul Dillette lived with me. Yep. My brother, Kurt, I call my brother, he was black and he lived with me. I lived with him. So, yep. yeah, I might say things that are off color. People go, whatever. I might, I might have said things about Muslims back in the day. But when I talk about Muslims, when I was talking about it back in the day, I was talking about the extremists that killed people. Yes. Little do people know I was married to a girl who was black from South Africa that wasn't Muslim. So, yep. if I'm a racist, I'm going to lose my. KKK membership card because I'm not. Yeah. I'm not, no. Man. No. The real thing. And I think what somebody said back in the day was too. They're like, well, he said slavery was good, and that's not what I said. I said slavery is bad. We all can agree slavery was fucking yeah. bad. But I said if you are a true descendant from a slave, I said you should thank your lucky stars. Yes, them being a slave wasn't great, yeah. but they were a slave, and when they got freed, they spread out through America and started having families, and you were born. Yeah. So you should be thankful that you're in America. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Muscle Discord. And we have a super special guest on my show. The one and only Lee Priest, man. Yeah. Thank you for coming on this had show. Hit, had, to hit okay. had to hit okay on being recorded. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, man. Th thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I know you're busy, busy schedule. You're on a ton of other podcasts. So I really appreciate you coming on here. And um, man, we are, this is uncensored. So, and Lee Priest yeah. is uncensored. So that's why I'm excited to have you on the show. Well, thank you. Okay. So, first question, I'm going to jump right into this um, the daddy Ioli shit that went down, uh, right? And yeah, sure, you've, there's been lots of videos. You were on Johnny Bravo, all that, and kind of sp sp talked about it there. Um, my question more so is about how you handled all the backlash from his fans, the trolls, the comments, you know, the accusations they were trying to make about your daughter and abusing your daughter, all this stuff, this bullshit. Oh, abusing, how do you deal with abusing, it? Abusing, yes. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. Uh, I, just, I just look at it like, when I look at when they say it, I always click on their profiles. They look like 14, 15, 16 year old kids that haven't got a clue, would never say anything to your face in real life. And they're just riding Daddy Aoli's cock. Well, maybe he's, they're fingering his vagina more like it because he's a fucking pussy. So, yeah, just I just laugh because I just look at that going, man, you don't even look into anything. For one, they first day of saying, and I put my ex in hospital, she was like almost near death. So, you know, I went on tons of ride-alongs when I lived in America with the police force. There'd be a, I would have been arrested for sure, put in jail. Probably yeah. would have been deported because I'm not an American citizen. I had a green card and all, but there'd be a record. So I just say, show me the record, show me the evidence. You know, I even told my daughter about it. She laughed. So I'm like, you know, if it's here, put it out there. I said, show me all the evidence. I said, I got nothing to hide. And the thing was, if I had done that, I'm so open. I would have said there was a time in my life where I 
put an ex-wife in hospital and stuff, and but then I got counselling or whatever. So I just laugh and just think how sad are these people's lives that that's all they could do. They go on any post that's not related to it, they just put wife abuser and this and that, or, yeah, this is bad, but you beat your wife. I'm just like, seriously, this is all you got to do? And the lads have always said, like, the internet's great and social media's great, but really there's so many trolls out there who just do that sort of thing. I'm thinking... Now, maybe one when, when you get older in life and you grow up and you realize what a dick you were and stuff like that, you might reflect on how childish and stupid you were. But then again, the way the world's going now, and I see all these protests on college campuses from grown adults, I'm thinking the world's on a decline. Us as humans, I think, or some, are just devolving backwards. We're getting dumber and dumber when I see drag queens and gay people and that free Palestine, free this. I'm like, yeah, go over there. They love your kind over there. Go over there and see how long you last as a gay person or drag queen in those countries. That's You'd be true. probably stoned to death or something. So this whole bullshit about, you know, when you're watching these people in those things now at the moment on the college campuses, they shut what the campus down for a month, one of them and stuff. I'm thinking, if you want to really go and help, put them all on a plane, send them to Palestine and do good there because you're not doing any good here. No one gives a shit. It's like these people like vegans that go crazy running the restaurants. You're turning people against your cause. If that's your cause, but it's not even like, yes, Palestine, you don't want any innocent Palestinians, women, children, men killed, but they're more Hamas. They're all like Hamas. We're, we are Hamas, death to America. So I'm thinking Hamas is a terrorist group. Imagine if I've got a couple of hundred people, thousands of people in white hoods and stood there go, I am KKK, would be locked up straight away. It's like, yeah. they're a terrorist group, they're a hate group, and they're just letting them get away with all this shit, burning the flag. It's like here in Australia, we have groups that burn a flag. If I got the Aboriginal flag and burn it, I'll be locked up for a hate crime. So if you don't well, like America and you're not set against it, why are they protesting now? I mean, they're, they're, they're upset oh. about the, 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 the president of the university having ties with Jews, yeah. so like that, and then like, well, you didn't know that before. Now you're all of a sudden mad like, about how it. How long has the Gaza Strip fighting been going on there for in that area of the world? Yeah. Yes, it's on and off, on and off, but it's been going on for God as long as I can remember in that part of the world. It's never been really at peace, you know. Sadly, but you know when when uh, people hate to hear it, but you know when Trump was in, there was no shit going on. So <laughs> yeah, we well, can go back and forth on that but uh yeah you know i i agree like it's it's crazy out there with the fans and the trolling and um i'm, I'm going through it now with uh fuad aka okay. freddie white um you know so uh, i just posted that video did a live stream with mac truck and we had a uh, a former friend of fuad's on the show because this friend made some wild accusations about you know fuad and fuad's wife and so mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to report on this. I'm going to reach out to this guy and, you know, let him speak his mind and kind of give his take on what's going on here. And if Ford wants to talk about it and defend himself, he can come on the show, whatever. Um, so that video was out. Uh, Fuad today just contacted me. Uh, we had about a 30 minute conversation and he wasn't happy that uh, I made that video. Um, he was upset that, uh, you know, his wife was talked about. I didn't talk about your mm -hmm. wife. Okay. Your, your former best friend talked about your wife, okay, for one. And when she gets in your business and reaches out to, you know, a friend of yours because he made a, po uh, a comment on one of your, your posts on Instagram, she she invited herself into the, like, Mack trucks of the lion's den, okay? Now she's involved. So, and I, I posted a video, I got a lot of haters in the comments saying, you know, leave Fuad alone, this and that. And like, I kind of see like what you're going through. People is doing the same thing. They just, they look at one side, they try to defend that, that one person, just like they were trying to defend that Aioli. But do you remember he <laughs> fucking strangled a cat on camera? Like, do you not, do you forget yeah. what he did? And gave the factory workout. And someone told me too, there were videos or something that he'd done something to his dogs as well, but yeah. I never saw them. So I didn't mention it or anything. You know, if I haven't got evidence the shock people could just be making that up type of thing but yeah it's crazy but it's like you know nothing was really said about Fuad earlier on but it's sad it just seems whether it's true or not yeah. you know you can go back to Donald Trump when Trump wasn't president everyone loved him no matter who you were people loved Trump their photos with him going to his place going to functions yeah. with him as soon as you become somewhat famous or become successful everyone tries to tear you down so yeah. 
it's weird that it's like people, as long as you're on their level and maybe you're not successful, you're not really well known, people like you. The minute you become popular or get some success and you leave these people behind, they hate it. So they want to try and bring you back down to their level. It's really weird. It's like even in bodybuilding or any sport, bodybuilders, you could place fifth, fourth, sixth. Oh, we're rooting for you to win. Come on, you're going to win. You're going to win. You start winning. All of a sudden, they turn against you and want you to lose. So it's like, <laughs> I guess the humans are a very strange yeah. species when it comes to lifting people up and then tearing them back down. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I wanted to ask that question, too, with regards to Fuad. You've you've dealt with him. You were on his show. You know, what's your take on on Fuad? You know, again, I give I give my opinion. I want your, your kind of opinion on him. Well, like I remember um, when Leo, you know, who passed away, had Leo longevity, like I used to go on his show, one time I dressed up as Fuad, I put the bald cap on, painted on the beard, and I just mocked him because he was telling the story once when he first met me. He didn't really like me because Robert Kennedy introduced us once, and I just looked at him because Robert Kennedy said he's going to be the next best thing, and he said, I went, yeah, whatever, and made, made like a thing like that. So I don't think he really liked me in the beginning, probably because he didn't get my sense of humor or really understand me. So And that happens a lot sometimes when you don't really know someone. It's easy to make assumptions about how they are or, how they react to you. I've got a dry sense of humor. People think it's Lee being serious or not. But, you know, once we got talking and we knew each other, again, I'm fine with Fuad. I, I got no problem with him. You got no problem with me. I go on his show and we have a good laugh and stuff. So I think sometimes, you know, I get told a lot in the beginning I was arrogant, but I'm, I'm in person, I'm a real shy person. And if you were to come up to me and go, hey, Lee, how are you going? I'd be, fan, I'd be like, oh, thank you. How are you? But then if yeah. I don't really know you because I'm shy, I'll just stop there. And people are like, oh, he's arrogant, he doesn't talk. But if you keep talking to me, I'll come out of my shell and start talking. So I think we can all make assumptions on people. I know I got judged a lot with people when who don't know me, like, not in the bodybuilding world, but just people in general. They see the tattoos, oh, he must be a drug dealer, bikey, gangster. And then when they get to know me, oh, you're nothing like I thought you were. So, you know, we're all, I think we're all guilty of making those assumptions where I've been in gyms before and someone will be looking at me like, what's he looking at, the prick? Doesn't like my yeah. tattoos, he's talking shit. But then later on, they'll come over and go, oh, I can't believe it was you. Sorry for staring, but I'm a big fan of yours. But in my mind, I'm thinking, what are you staring at me for, you bastard? You know, and yeah. there was another thing. Sadly, my, I used to call him my brother, Doc AJ. He used to do a lot of my stuff for me, videos and that. I was in England with a friend of mine, Aaron. And one time he's like, look at those people over there. Because he's he was a black guy. He's like, mm. they're probably like, what's that black guy doing? They're so racist. They're so racist. I'm like. They're not even thinking that, Doc. Stop thinking that. He's like, they are. They don't like seeing a black guy. I said, whatever. So then Aaron and I walked away somewhere and they came over and said to him, oh, we're just looking over. We thought, we thought you were worried or something hanging out with those two tattoo guys. So he's thinking they're looking at him because he's black hanging yeah. out with us. But they were thinking, oh, that poor guy hanging out with those two tad luck guys because Aaron's got a face tattoo as well. So I think we can all make assumptions and just, you know, until you really get to know people or find out, it's easy just to say, this is what someone's thinking or this is what they're doing. So I think we're all guilty of it. You know, well, that's, you know, when you first see someone, that's the first thing you've got to go of is their appearance. Yeah. And generally, you know, I remember seeing once, because people talk about my tattoos, I remember seeing a girl once, she had like a lot of really nice, cool design tattoos. And one of the tattoos in between, and that was a Tweety Bird. No, it that looks pretty stupid. It's like, you know, why do you have a Tweety Bird like that for? And actually then I got the meter somewhere, I was just talking to her. I said, you got all these designs, but the Tweety Bird just, you know, stands out as something different. And to me, I think that looks a bit silly. But then she come to tell me when she was younger, her grandmother raised her a lot. And they used to watch the Tweety Bird cartoon. That was the grandmother's favorite cartoon on TV. And when she passed, she got that tattoo in honor of the grandmother. So, you know, there's a lot of things that go into things that we don't know why people do things and how they are. But if you get yeah. talking to them, like, oh, okay, that makes sense now. So, Yeah, yeah. And I talked to Floyd. I had a 30-minute pretty much heated conversation with him mm -hmm. um and uh you know he right off the bat he was dictating like what i should be doing with my show and then right mm -hmm. off the bat i'm like okay i see why people were saying that he's controlling he was trying to mm -hmm. control what i put out there he's like well you'd be better off doing this instead of that you better off focusing on this instead of that i'm like dude like this is my channel what the fuck are you trying to tell me to do with my channel now you're trying to control what i put out there like this is this is so i said like, okay that kind of validated his, his personality that mm -hmm. he's controlling and I kind of see that maybe what he's doing with Sam Siluk and others. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of vindicated me in the sense that, yeah, that, that's his personality. He's a bit of a narcissist. He's a bit of a control freak. He's a bit of a, you know, I got to be in the spotlight and be ahead of my athletes and, and, and talk, control the narrative for them. And it's just, it's just, uh, that's going to be my opinion. I'm not going to change it, especially mm -hmm. the people that reach out to me, the, the top, some of these pros. Yeah. 
they're like, man, I've dealt with him. I got a, another page that on Instagram, a, a prominent bodybuilding page. They reached out to me and were like, man, thank you for making that video, man. Like I dealt with Fuad. I did business with him, yeah. blah, 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 blah. It's just like, it just confirmed it. It just confirmed it for me. Yeah. And it's just like. It's like he, it's like I've heard a lot too from people. I'm the type of person, you know, in this industry, any industry, especially bodybuilding, you hear so many things. I, I'm, I'm sure there's tons of stuff said about me and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. So, you know, like I said, I hear the stuff that Fuad said about me, but then we got talking, we get on fine. So. Yeah. I got nothing against him. I can only take him how he treats me, and he's been nice to me, and we get on good. So I don't, you know, when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, yeah, okay, if that's what you're thinking. Us, yeah. you know, I'm always, I'm always the type I like to get to know someone first and talk to them face to face, and you know, because normally then you can get a good feel for someone and how they are and stuff. So, but you know, at the moment, I've never had a reason to dislike him or anything like that. So I just take it as okay, that's that person's opinion. That person had a bad yeah. interaction, so that's him. Not, I've never been that one where, you know, shit. I've had lots of people who say they're my friend when they're with me and yeah. then they'll go to another group and that group would be like oh that fucking lead priest is a fucking dickhead and that and then my supposed friends like yeah i agree i agree he's a fucking idiot so it's <laughs> like i'm the type of the person where i like fuad if i was hanging out with you and the guy you had on that and you just didn't like you i'd be like hey that's your opinion that's fine yeah. but i'm not going to jump on the bandwagon and go yeah i hate him too just because you do so i'm going to be like hey he's done nothing to me so until that time comes yeah, I like him. So, but there's so many people that you know just jump ship compared to yeah. what group they're in. Yeah, I, I know. I, I like. I do. I personally have fucking hatreds towards Fuad. No, uh, he just like I've said many times. He just rubs me the wrong way. And a lot of yeah. the things that I've seen come out have kind of proved that, you know, he kind of has that kind of a character to him. And then when I talked mm -hmm. to him on the phone, it kind of just confirmed it. So that's that's mm -hmm. it. But I don't want to drag on the Fuad thing. I think I got to get off the whole Fuad. Like thing. when you talk to him on the phone, I'm sure. You know, yeah. you know, so I, I do know he can be heated sometimes. And I yeah. guess, you know, when you talk to someone, you, you know, cause that guy's brought up his wife, even though his wife, yes. you know, brought herself in with the message. You know, if someone's talking about your wife, you're going to get heated to defend her and stuff. And so I, I respected that. I res I said, that's why I respect, I understand what you're doing as a man coming in, trying to defend your wife. So I totally respect that side of it. Yeah. Yeah. I just find that the bodybuilding world sometimes now just gets so, gossiping and stuff and then even when you look at it, like you know you have show your know, podcasts where people just give their criticism or critique of a physique mm -hmm. here we have grown men who are adults muscular yeah. acting like little girls because somebody says oh you didn't look that good you weren't ripped fuck you what do you mean i wasn't ripped? you got no idea it's like it's yeah. just some criticism i'm not hating on you i'm just not hating my opinion is but these days it's like how dare you say that fuck you what did you ever do it's like i can say something about someone and go well, I don't really like him. He looks good in that. And then I get, you're just jealous. You never won the Olympia, you fucking short ass. But I'm thinking, what's that got to do with anything? I'm just they would never say that to your face. They would never, if you were in an expo, they would never dare say that to your face. It's because they're on the That's keyboard. What I said too a lot. That's what I said a lot online. It's like, it's so weird that all these years, people say, if I saw you, I'd do this and do that. I'm like, mate, I'm a hitman sweat dream. Look, I'm going to be in Tennessee in June 5th at an expo. Yeah. If you really want me, it says where I'm going to be, what times I'm going to be there. I'm not hard to find. I don't hide from anyone. But, you know, when I post stuff sometimes and you get these weird comments that go on forever, I'm like, mm -hmm. like you've got too much time on your hands. But I think to myself, then if I reply to like, I'm allowed to have an opinion. But I said, look, you are allowed to have an opinion. But you know what I do? I, there's things I follow and I see some of the dumbest stuff. I just go, eh, that's pretty dumb. But yeah. I just keep scrolling. I don't comment on everything. It's like, and I said, I, I, I equate it to if social media wasn't around, and let's just say you're at a restaurant, you know how you sit, there's a booth here and a booth there, you can hear the people behind you talking. Let's just say somebody was talking something and you're like, oh, that's dumb. You're not going to get up and turn around and go, man, you're a fucking dickhead. What the fuck is that shit you're talking? It's like, in person, you'd never say because no. you could get into a fight or shit could happen. But online, it's like, oh, yeah, fucking dickhead. Let me like, it's like, so you're not going to say it in person, you know, hold back from, and why get people get so worked up too? It's like, why get so angry in that over what somebody said? I get it all the time. Like, if I do a podcast like this, I'll read some comments. Oh, that dickhead talking shit again. But it's like, well, if you see my name in the title, why do you fucking watch it if you hate me? Exactly. I, I don't still get, fucking took I don't, time. I don't, I don't look at shit I don't like. If I don't like something, I don't watch it. It's like, yeah. it's that simple. So, so yeah, the people that take the time to go in the comments and say, this fucking, this is trash, this is a negative channel. Yeah. And then, like, well, you watch the video. With the title that I had, you know, could be Trump or anyone on Twitter. I mean, X now, it's like, yep. oh, I can't believe what Trump said here. And then 
then why do you follow Trump if you don't like him? Why do you, if you don't like me, why do you follow me? Yeah. Half the time, if they just keep writing shit, I just block them or yeah. move follower. I'm like, yeah. if you hate me that much, why do you follow me? As I've said it before, I'm not really into tennis. I might watch the finals or something on Wimbledon, but I'm not like really into it. But I've never followed Djokovic or Nadal. And then, oh, what am I? Oh, let me just go to Nadal's page. You suck. Your backhand sucks. You're a shit tennis player. Fuck you. I'm like, Who's got the time and energy to follow people you don't like and then just put stupid comments? It's like, like I said, the world's going mad. It's going crazy. Social media has definitely changed the game. Oh. Um, and well, let's let's move into, I want your take on, it's a little bit, a few weeks old, uh, Tony Burton and Raphael kind of beef. And, oh. you know, first off, like, who do you think should have won that show? Based on what you saw, video, from, photos. From, what, from, from videos and photos, like I said, it's not the greatest judge, but from what I saw on that, I probably would have given Tony the edge. Okay. Like rapper, if he's really on, like I mean, on on, he's hard to beat. Yeah. But if you're really getting critical point by point and conditioning, size and shape and everything, that day I think Tonio had it. So I am probably leaning towards, you know, Rafa being in his hometown of Brazil and that sometimes the crowd and all that, if it's really close, can sway to his favor. So on that day, I thought Tonio, I think, should have won. And so, yeah, you would would think that, but it was a six point spread, so that's almost unanimous. I don't know, right? And it's, it's just like so, well, I, I think I don't think it was that clear cut. You know, I think if it had been anything, I would have said a tie and maybe a count back, or yeah. maybe yeah. one one or two point, but not six. It wasn't that unanimous that he was the clear winner because no way. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So I, I noticed that too. And, um, you know, uh, I, I wanted to talk to uh, Tamer about uh, mm -hmm. this competition. I, I first reached out to him because he watched the interview with Tonio and he messaged me on uh, Instagram and uh, he's like, hey, man, watch the whole video. Yeah. And I, I invited him to come on the show and say, just explain like what happened with the judging. Just that's it. Nothing about the drama between Raphael and Antonio. Just talk about the, the judging. Tamer. Is Tamer the one that's on? Is he on the show with Chris Palmer and that on that? No, other no, that's the Ter Tarek. Okay, okay. Yeah. And you got Tamer. Get him, get him all yes, you mixed up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he, so Tamer was the head judge at the Arnold Classic Brazil. And, um, you know, I just want to talk to him about it. So he said, Yeah, man, I will come on. I'm so, I mean, busy. I'm traveling, promoting shows here in Brazil. I'm coming back to the States, and blah, blah, blah. We'll work out a time. Again and again, okay, sorry, man. I'm sorry, I'm busy work at a time. And then uh, Dennis James messages me and he's like, Hey, man, I got Tamer on the show. I'm like, well, Fuck, like, dude, he said he's coming on, show, he's coming on your show. So I'm like, uh, Whatever, like, it's just a little bit. Yeah, that's one thing I've never understood too, like asking judges because they're not going to admit if they've done anything wrong. And after every contest I've done, not once in my life did I go up to a judge and say, Where do you think I need to improve? It's like, I just trained, went into a show in contest, but now I keep hearing, oh, yes, after the show, I went down and spoke to the judge for feedback. To me, that sounds like you're going down to kiss fucking ass, that this judge, it's like you got to a judge and say, where do you think I can improve? And the judge tells you, you're like, oh, thank you so much, and that you're trying to get that judge in your yeah. pocket. To me, athletes and judges should not have any contact whatsoever. You don't, you wouldn't see it in the Olympics, why we score this in the fucking ice skating or this and that. It's like... Come on yeah. now, but yeah, I wanted to get the judge for feedback. The judge that's sitting there, weighing a buck sixty, hardly ever trained, never trained, never been on a fucking diet. It's like, come on, it's like to me, it's so, just stupid. okay. Okay, so what do you? What uh, I have no, I don't know Tyler Mannion personally or anything like that. Uh -huh. um, what are your thoughts about him being one of the head judges? You know, he hasn't been a top bodybuilder or anything like that. Gone yeah. through the. Well, I think he's been around it long enough to understand. To, it, so, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, but I do like how Tyler will come on and do those yes. things and explain stuff. So I think that helps people a lot more rather than, yep. like you said, or speculate. So it's good that he's doing those videos on Instagram yep. and explaining it. So I think that helps people a lot too. But they go to individual judges and say, where do you think? Because you might say go to one judge and he might say, you need to bring your back up more. Because everyone, Is we all have our personal yeah. of what we like. You're freaky, symmetrical. Yeah. We all see things differently. So, you know, you're hoping overall the judges you know, pretty consistent, but one judge might say you need to bring your back up more, blah, 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 and the other judge might be like, oh, your back looks fantastic. I think you need to work on your chest. So I'm like, okay. Well, <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's just weird that, you know, we all know what we really need to do. If you've got good friends who are honest with you, you can look in the mirror. You know what we need to improve. So asking a judge to me is just silly. It's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do agree if with you. If all the these judges are honest, I'd tell the guys to go work on their fucking carbs. 
So it's like, you know. Yeah, they never do mention that. They never mention the calves. I've seen guys get second who are complete, and the guy that wins has no calves. And to me, I'm like, they how do you say calves don't matter? They're a body part. And if you're, uh, I got water, thank you. You got, um, can you get your cats running? Yeah, if you're missing calves, to me, it's like, that is an actual body part. If somebody was missing biceps or triceps or something else, yeah. you wouldn't give them first place. So why is there this thing yeah. about, oh, we'll overlook the calves? I, I don't get it. It's like, that's an actual muscle group. So how can you overlook it? Yeah, agreed, agreed. The calves, I'm a stickler for calves. Um, it's rare to have that a complete uh, package to head to toe yeah. and the calves are there. So, And yeah. sometimes people genetically can't build them. And the same yeah. thing is, if you, go, if you go get implants, you get marked down. But yet there can be girls I've seen back in the day when I was engaged to Adela, and a lot of girls mm -hmm. didn't have breast implants up flat. They were told, oh, if you had breast implants, you'd place higher. So why can't they say to guys, and if you had calves, you'd win? It's like, go, how can you tell girls to get breast implants to place yeah. high, but guys can't get calf implants to look more yeah. complete? But you're telling a girl she can get breast implants to be complete and win shows. So. Yeah. Agreed, agreed. Um, another topic I kind of want you to pick your brain on is the uh, Milos and Patrick tour <laughs> beef there, <laughs> which is which has been pretty. It's not done. I'm still oh. talking to Milos, and I, and I, Patrick has been messaging me, and uh, Patrick is pretty adamant. He's he's calling Milos a liar. Uh, he didn't coach him. He gave him some information, but he didn't coach him. Milos is on the other oh. hand saying, "No, I, I I coached him. I gave him information. I checked in with him. Oh. I'm on the side of I believe that." Milos was coaching him. Was it uh -huh. a check in like it is today on social media? You text your coach every day, okay, I look like this. Here's my way. No, not like that. It was back in the day, right? So, what's your thought on, you know, who's lying here? Someone's lying. Well, I met Milos. I first met Milos when I was 17 at the university in Arizona in 89 and that. And ever since then, I've known Milos. And Milos has a memory like an elephant. He doesn't make shit up. Milos was like me back with the IPB. He would stand up and argue uh, on a hick. He got suspended a couple of times. So, to me, like you said, if he's sending Patrick information to help him out, if Patrick's not looking good, he says, oh, what can I do? And me, I says, why don't you try this, try that? You might not be coaching him as in Patrick terms of coaching like it is today, like you said, sending updates, going back and forth. Yeah. But to me, it's like if I sent you information, a diet and this and that, and you tried it and it worked and you look great and won the show, that's okay. But you, can, you can tell like you're helping or you're doing something. If you're followed a bit and it's worked for you, yeah. yeah, it's not coaching like one on one as we see today, no. but it is helping you and giving you information that you went away with and used, and you look good for using it. So, yeah, it's like that thing. It's like it's almost like schematics or whatever it is when you go on wordplay. Okay, it wasn't actually coaching, but it was this. I sort of helped you, and you tried it and this and that. So, like I said, me lost to me. I said I've never known him to lie. He's always been up front. He's got a memory like an elephant. So. Whether Patrick, like I said, he's thinking of coaching like he does, where he's on top of everyone. Yeah. How do you look today? Send me the updates on your food and that. So, you know, and, you know, even um, Dennis said how me was sending the same thing with the fax mm -hmm. machine that runs the paper. Yeah. So if he's sending you all that info and then you're calling him back saying, okay, this is great, me lost. And he said that Patrick thanked him a lot. So I'm guessing he must have used the information. So me lost, like I said, he probably took that as I helped you. So I coached you a little bit. Yeah. Said, but in today's standard, you wouldn't call that coaching. But even though you still help the person, yeah. so I, I believe me also. Yeah, I'm 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 going on uh, with the Milo side of things. I Not saying I anything. Do, I, watch, I did I did watch Dennis show the other day too. And I, and Dennis is like me too. I don't get when these athletes come on now and they say my coach said to do this show and that show. I'm like you're the bodybuilder, you you're the one in control. You yes. do the shows you want to do. Or my coach says, I can't do this. Like, I never had a coach. I did it myself because, yes, like I've always said, if you've got a great training partner, a good support team, that's really all you need. Because, you know, when you get ready for a show those last few weeks, your mind goes fucking bad. If yes. I do this, I can look better. If I do this, you just need someone to calm you down and say, look, you look great. Don't go stupid because we all do stupid stuff. So some people might need a coach for that. But to me, no one knows your body better than you. If you've been doing it long enough and you're at the pro level, you've done you a lot of stuff. So it's like if you come to me and said, Lee, I want you to coach me, yeah. I don't know how your body responds to anything. You can give me an idea. I'll write you up a diet and maybe give you a cycle or something, and you go away and do it. Then I'm going to say, okay, how do you feel? And you might be like, oh, I'm not feeling good. I didn't get a pump. Okay, add a bit more carbs. Now, all this stuff I'm telling you to do, you could do yourself because – 
I'm just experimenting with you, throwing out ideas, saying, do this, do that. How are you feel now? Okay, stick to that. How do those drugs work? No good. Okay, maybe switch to this drug. It's like I think yeah. these athletes give too much too much up to their coaches and they don't believe in themselves. It's like I have more faith in these athletes than they do themselves, but it's just like that's the good thing about Paul Dillette. When Paul Dillette lived with me mm-hmm. and we're getting ready for the 98 Olympia, I said, Paul, you got all this smash, you're big, you've come this far. What do you need Chad for? He just walked over to the fridge and goes, listen, son, because he always called me son. He goes, here on the fridge, look, breakfast, I eat this. Lunchtime, it says eat this. He goes, I'm just lazy. It's easier for me to be told what to do and I can just read uh, it up. Yes. Me, me, at lunch, me at lunchtime, I'm, I might be like, oh, what will I have, steak, fish, chicken? I don't know. Whereas Paul's like, it says i got to have steak. I don't have to think about it. So I think yeah. a lot of people like that aspect that takes all the – guessing out or thinking about it they all they can focus on is their training but i I never liked it i'd rather do it myself and learn from trial and error take notes on how your body works it's like i've always told people if you get on cycles a lot of kids and pros would be like four different drugs five different drugs and they're like oh these drugs are working good but you're on four different things how do you know what's working and what isn't yeah i said that's why if you're ever going to do it i always said you're better off starting off just using testosterone by itself take notes on how you feel clean out don't take anything maybe a month or two later take some other drug and see how you feel that way you'll know which drugs you respond to the best so if you do put three or four together you'll know they're the ones that made you feel the best but just throwing a whole heap out there yeah i'm on four or five different drugs and only two are probably working the best yeah. it's like you know why why do that so it's yeah just, yeah, I agree. The athletes nowadays are relying too much on their coaches and mm-hmm. your coach has one job. Make sure you get in shape. Coach isn't mm-hmm. there to dictate what show you're doing. Like really, I, yeah. I talked to my coach and he said, I should wait and come back next year and do another show. Uh-huh. I just had an interview with Ronald Gordon. He plays third at the Detroit Pro. And he mm-hmm. said that today. He's like, or yesterday when I recorded it, he's like, yeah, I talked to Abdullah and you know, it was a mutual decision, but it shouldn't even be a mutual decision. It'd just be yeah. your decision. Yeah, like, this, no. it's like Tony, it's like Tony. Same thing. When he won, I know he's like talked to the family being in Brazil, but it was like after that show, he should have just said, you know what, I'm going straight to Detroit. Yeah. And his coach would be like, okay, let's do it. And then his coach would be like, okay, if we could do on that show, it's you know, it was only like a week later, wasn't it? This is what we've yeah. got to do. This is the eating plan for the next week. This is what we've got to do. And that's what it should have been. It should be him dictating to the coach. And and all these coaches too, I'm yet to see one. Like Hina Hani's got a lot of good people and done good, but mm-hmm. The pro creator has he taken someone from amateur level that's a nobody and made yeah. him mr olympia a lot of these guys get people when they're already genetic some, freaks and they're already yeah. yeah it's like yeah. i haven't seen them take someone out of the egg you know yeah. they just hatched from the egg and made them this big pro it's like they seem to pick and choose like okay this guy's looking good let me yeah. pick this guy because this guy's a genetic freak me working with him could probably help him a little bit but even without me this guy's going to be a fucking champion no matter what. So <laughs> Yeah, I would say the one the one coach that has kind of proven that was, is Milos because he took Samson Dowda from a nobody yep. place in nowhere and shows to win the Arnold Classic and coming third at the yep. Olympia. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, they um, said, look at Ronnie, look at all these guys when Harney got him and Chad had him and stuff. Yeah. Jay Cutler and that. They're already mass monsters and got everything to them. All they, all they need is that little bit of fine tuning. It's not like, it'd be like, you know, Ferrari building a car and you got this great car. And then, then fucking this tuner comes along and goes, you know, what if I just get in the engine and I tweak it a little bit, knock it off, cat. That's the cat wanting to get in, bang on the door. He thinks it's a dog. So he's like, you know, you fine tune the car. I can't then go say, fucking, I made this Ferrari. The Ferrari was already this great car. I just went in and fine tuned the engine and made it a bit quicker. But I can't get credit for the fucking Ferrari because, you know, without Ferrari, you fine tune it and wins the race. And that's why it's kind of hard on, um, you know, Samson and then his wife uh, mm-hmm. coaching him, saying, you know, yeah. peak week, they, they peak him and they, he looks better for the shows than when he was with Milos. And I'm like, well, that's peak week. That's just a couple of days. Like, I mean, that's that's you taking credit for all the hard work he did with Milos. So it's again, it's yeah. just like people trying to ride on the coattails of something else. And, and, I, and I always like, and I've always said, I hate peak week because so many times you see it. My, I don't even call it peak week. It's just like, yeah. I never did anything. It's like, all my photo shoots you see in the magazines were done two weeks before a show. Because two weeks that's before. Generally when I'm ready. And generally yeah. that's when you see these guys post their pictures. Dennis James back in the day, you'd see all these pictures and go, this guy's going to win the fucking show. They walk out on stage, you're like, what happened? It's, yeah. like, it's yeah. like they all think for some reason, I've said it, you've got a 16-week diet, 
from day one, I'll be eating the same food, train at the same time, do cardio twice or three times a day at the same time, using the same substances Then maybe in a lot, you know, for eight weeks, I might use some. And then the next eight, I switch it to something else. But then it's like the very last week, like I said, we've been like a robot, eat, sleep, train, eat, take the supplements at this time. The last week, hold on. We're going to stop training, cut back on the cardio, switch up the drugs. You don't think your body's going to go into some sort of what the fuck are you doing? Because yeah. you're so fine tuned at that point. Any little thing you do is going to throw your body out of whack. That's yeah. why I say if you're looking good, don't change it. The last week, all you should do is slowly start cutting your water out and putting tan on. That should be it. You yeah. know, it's like this. I never, I never did carb loading. I never did any okay. stupid shit like that because that's hit and miss. You can, oh, fuck, I carved up too much. Yeah. Now I spilt over. I didn't carb up enough. I'm flat. So it's yeah. like you need to just trust in yourself. That's why I said that last week. People think they've got to do this hocus pocus, which is going yeah. to perform a miracle. And half the time that miracle doesn't happen. So it's like if you're looking good, don't mess with it. Yeah, I agree. I think guys look good two weeks out, three weeks out. They got they're shredded, they're dry. The the the, the striations are there in the glutes, and then they come on to the stage and they look flatter. They're not vascular, yeah. and it's because yeah. they dropped too much water. They took too much diuretics, and it's yeah. just it's too much. Yeah, they go off. Some people are nerves, you know, yes. on that, get nervous and stuff. Because I remember even myself, I could be a week out, veins yeah. everywhere backstage. Yeah. I'm like. Where are my fucking veins yes. going? <laughs> but then the night show, because you're more relaxed. You ate, like, you had a burger, oh, whatever. Out. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, yeah. you know, people just need to calm down and stop looking for a miracle. If yeah. you look good, don't mess with it. It's like, you know, then it. too, even if you do carb loading, I've seen some people who might be on 100 grams of carbs a day and then push it up to over 1,000. Yeah. If you're on 100 grams, if you just went to 200 e extra, just... that would make a difference. Why go to the full extent? Because again, your body is going to be like, what the it's fuck gonna be you shocked. Doing? Got, yeah. yeah and i train like if it was saturday i'd still train friday i'd go to the gym and just do like a light flush pump because yeah like because you've been so active i just can't not people sometimes don't train from the wednesday on or whatever mm -hmm. i said no oh, I'm so active. keep doing I it man there. it's like i've got to do something you know yeah. i got to keep moving it's not going to affect you when you get up there you're not, you're not going to be going squatting six plates the tail two before you're not going to be no. benching heavy that's why when i saw hardy before the Arnold, oh Boston, yeah, you're still all that weight. I'm like, why are you doing that? You're a week yeah. out from the show. It's so yeah. easy to tear something and fuck it up. You're not going to lose any size, even nope. if you stop taking your gear a week out. You're yeah. not going to drop any muscle size or anything. So yeah, it's just crazy what people do. Yeah, it's crazy, and uh, I agree with that. Uh, people overthink it, and then they end up fucking it up. Um, question about uh, uh, Rich Piana because I know you you had your run-ins with Rich Piana. I worked. With Rich Piana at Mutant. Um, I mean, I've never met Rich. I've never met him. You never met him, though? You, oh, no, you met him. Okay. What running, I had with, what running did I have with him? Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought I thought you, you, you there was some stuff going back and forth. I remember back yeah. in the day. Yeah. 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 Something uh, you said or, or he said about you. or Oh, it was about the racism thing. It was about something being racist or Rich Piana racist or it was vice versa. I remember oh, yeah, wasn't there, there was something that recorded about him being racist, but yes. I don't think I was against him. I, I, I think I was defending him. I was like, you know, what he yeah. said wasn't good. But I, I said, who hasn't in the heat of the moment probably been with a friend or someone? Well, we've all yeah. used racist terms or told racist jokes. Shit, Paul and I used to go back and forth telling racist jokes because Paul was just funny. And I'll be like, doesn't that offend you? He's like, no, he goes, I'm not that. The N word. He goes, yeah. I'm a black Canadian. I'm not, I'm not an N. <laughs> it's like, so he would laugh back and forth all the time. So it's yeah. just like, yeah, because when people try and do that, it's like, you know, it's like he was, you know, on the vid, on the phone course saying, oh, yeah, and, yes, yes. I think that's what, what it was. It was about, yeah. His yeah. girlfriend slept with someone and he used the N word. So yes. I said, yeah, you can't, you know, people that live in glass houses can't throw stones and, yeah. Everyone yeah. always tries to act holier than now, but, you know, we've all said things in the heat of the moment, especially when you're angry, because, you know, when you're angry, whether it be your missus or anyone, you're trying to look for the most hurtful thing you can come yeah. out with, and whether it be yeah. the C word for a woman or something else, it's like, you, you know, it might never be racist or have a race or thought in your body, but at that point in time, no matter what you're doing, you're going to try and drive that nail in yeah. as hard as you can using the most hurtful thing you can find, and, yeah. I think that's all that's all he did in the heat of the moment when he was angry, he said that. Yeah. And then people go on, he's so racist, but yet his whole career and life he's probably had no. black friends, friends yes. and everything. And they're probably 
we never saw that side of him. Was he hiding it all this time? It's like, no, it's just in that moment he said it yeah. that when he was really angry. So it's like, I don't hold that over anybody. So. Yeah, yeah. I never got that from him when I when I worked with him. Um, so that's yeah, that's basically like, what like I think. If we had photos and videos, here he is in Mississippi at a cross burning, going to a clan rally, thinking about, well, maybe, okay, maybe, maybe yeah. a little bit of racist. Yeah. You know, it's weird, but I remember I had a friend once, I told this story once before, and he was like, you know, Leo, because somebody asked me about someone being racist and this and that, I said, no, I don't think he is. But he he always said, look, Lee, if I got the preference, I have a daughter. I prefer she married a white man. That's just my preference, he said. But yeah. if she came home with a Hispanic, Chinese, black, he goes, I wouldn't care if he treats her good. I'm happy, but in my yep. preference, I prefer white. He's yep. racist. He's racist. I'm like, how's that racist? I said, Indians, Chinese, Jewish people, they all like to marry within their race. If you exactly. marry outside the, race, the family, disowns you. Yeah, it's a cultural difference and that, but we don't call them racist, do we? No. So it's like, no. why is it if a white person says, I prefer my daughter to wear a white, white man, you're being racist? But yet he said, yeah. I don't care if she does marry somebody else, but his preference would be white. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if your preference to date someone, I only date Asian girls, or they mm. doesn't make you a racist against white people or black people. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I think, I think these days, you know, the media has got a lot to do with it too. With it in America, everywhere now, it's yeah. like to me, it's like I always did it from the day I got to America when I fill out those forms, Hispanic. I always write. I said I wrote a box. I put human and tick that. Yeah, that's who I am. Who cares? What yeah, you are what you know, what religion you are. We're all human, and to me, it was like it's just causing divide. And the media does it so well now that people are divided over race. Yeah. Back in the day, you could be Republican or Democrat and vote for somebody; no one cared. Now, if you vote for Trump, you're racist. I hate you. Families get into fights because oh, they're yeah. voting for Trump or somebody yes. else. I'm like the media is just causing so much divide, and as the old saying, "Divide and conquer." Why we're so busy fighting amongst ourselves? The government's fucking in the ass from behind. So yeah. people just stop all the bullshit and just come together because if the people did unite, the government would be fucked. If everyone stopped fighting oh. amongst themselves and joined together, yeah. the government would be totally fucked. But at the moment, they're having a field day. They've got a lot of unrest between people now. It's just crazy. It's crazy. Everyone's distracted. That's what they, that's what they want. Yeah. Right? Keep them distracted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you, what is your like your thoughts on Sam Suluk and like kind of is that is – in my opinion, I think Sam still looks like the rich piano of our time right now. Like he just became this rising star out of nowhere and is just viral. Like, what are your thoughts on, on that comparison? Yeah, well, I met him at the Island. I think he's good. I've always defended him when people would be doing videos on him and that. Because to me, it was like he never said, well, shit, I would have been to Sam Sulik. I was competing though back in the day, but the amount of yeah. shit I used to eat and drink back in the day, if I filmed that, they wouldn't have been doing videos. Look at Lee giving bad advice. I'm like, I'm not giving me advice. I'm saying, this is what I do. This is what I eat. I'm yes. not telling you to go out and eat the same, drink the same. Yeah. And that's what Sam's doing. He's just giving you insight into his daily life. And it's weird now because look at any other sport, basketball back in the day or even now, you wouldn't see those top basketballers going on podcasts, talking to everyone. You go to a game, like you go to the Olympia or the Arnold, you can go to the Expos and meet these people up front, talk to them, you know, hang out with them. You can't go to a game, then after the game, go hang out with LeBron or someone and this yeah. and that. It's like you have so much access to bodybuilders that people take it for granted. And then, you know, I, I have a YouTube channel. I barely use it. Occasionally I go on live. People are like, why don't you do another live? Go on there and do this. I'm like, hey, back in my day, we had to wait for a magazine. You yeah. do a YouTube video. I mean, for wide people go, when's your next video coming up? It's like, I'm doing this because I like to. You should just appreciate when one comes out. It's like, you know, I'm not like, but they're so demanding and then they, complain about stuff i'm like you know sometimes i think you know we're too accessible and then people put shit on you for being you know it's like i'm an open book but yet, yeah now you're going to ridicule and stuff it's like you know yeah. it's weird they can pick apart your your life now because your life is online and they can see everything you're doing yeah. so they just give them more opportunity to pick you're apart. damned if you do damned if you don't so. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah agreed um okay transition in watching this it's just hard to please sometimes <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you this question because I remember walk, watching the Mr. Olympia press conferences back in like the night, like 1998 or 1997 or whatever right. it was. And you were up there kind of advocating saying, we need, we need more money for these competitors. Mm -hmm. We need more money. We need to stand up for it. Now that the Arnold Classic has announced the half a million first place prize for next mm -hmm. year, what are your thoughts on that? And what about the Olympia? Should the Olympia match it or beat it? Is that even enough still? Is 500 enough? 
thousand and up or should it be higher? Not really, but it's something you got to give it credit. It's something. It's yeah. not really enough when you figure, when you really look at it, the amount of effort and time bodybuilders put into the sport. And then, okay, we can't compare it to other sports, but it's sad when you watch someone just sit on the bench and they're going to get over 100,000 and yeah, 180,000 yeah. or more a game just to sit on a fucking bench. Yeah. I remember I told the story once I was getting ready for the Ironman and I was a week or two out at that stage where I hate doing cardio. You're just down, haven't got energy. And I'm watching TV and there's a thing on stadiums, pulling Vegas, Red Bull sponsoring. It was like the world championship of rock, paper, scissors. And they're yeah. getting more money than fucking bodybuilders do. Yeah. I'm like, I'm in the wrong sport. So it's like, yeah. it's just crazy. It's a good move, but I'm hoping, you know, people are saying, will Jake Wood now, will he make the Olympia 600? Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, if Jake was smart, he'd be like, you know what, rather than just go at 550, you know, it's some sport. Yeah. I'd love to see him come out and go, fuck you, Olympia's a million. Yeah. <laughs> so then, like, then I would have to go, holy fuck now. Next year, yeah. the Olympia, the Arnold's 1.1 million. So it can yeah. only be a good thing if they start doing that because, you know, people are expecting Jake to maybe bump it a little bit. But if he come out and just said, okay, you want to play that game, boom, I'm going straight here. Yeah. Now the ball's back in your court, Arnold. What are you going to do? So yeah. I think it's a good thing. So, But I'm no, hoping good. Jake goes not just a little bit. I mean, goes 800, really. Yeah, way up, up there. You know? Yeah, I could see him doing somewhere in the middle, like seven fifty or something like that. Like mm -hmm. going around to, the eighty, you know. You don't want to go just a little bit. It's almost like a car option. You know, hundred thousand. Someone goes a hundred and one, a hundred and two. Then yeah. I go, I'll just go uh, one hundred one point five. It's yeah. like, oh, okay, he's got it. So yeah, it's yeah, like, you know, yeah. you got to go that big step. Yeah, well, overall, it's good. It's good for bodybuilding to see the prize money going up finally, and. Um, because it's been 400,000 at the Olympia for a while. Arnold's yeah. always wanted to do that. Because I remember yeah. back in the day, we even said, you know, out of respect to the weed, isn't that? That's why he never increased it. But now Joe's gone and that he doesn't owe them anything anymore. So, yeah. you know. He just did it. Said, fuck it. I'm doing it. It's mm -hmm. good. I, think, I think it would be good too if they did. They did spread it down more. Okay, the weed. Yeah. That, but, you know, about the others. Give more nice to the athletes. Spread yeah. it down more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because uh, sixth and seventh and eighth, they don't really get much at all, right? So, well, like I said, uh, when I stood up that time at the Olympia, if you were out of the top ten, you got nothing. And when yeah. they gave Wayne that letter, at least from that point on, you got two thousand dollars. Yeah, it's not much, but at least it's something. If you're in Vegas, you can go have a good time, go out for yeah. a nice dinner with your family or friends. So, at least it's something rather than going home with just your dirty, sweaty towel with tan on it and shit. So, yeah. you know. Well, yeah, because I remember you you had to sign a letter. Who was the guy? What's the guy's name of the Wayne promoter? Demille. Who is it? Wayne. Wayne DeMille. Wayne DeMille, yes. Well, and he's like, like he said, he said the year before, Milos tried it. And he said yeah. to Milos, you got to put it in writing. And they got into an argument. Well, why can't you do it now? It's got to be in writing. So yeah. I put it in writing the night before, knowing he'd probably bring that up again. Yeah. And when he's like, and Lee, you said if we don't get the money, you'll get up and walk out of here. I said, yeah, I would. But I didn't put it in writing. That's when I handed it to him. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So people don't re remember that stuff. Lee did fight for the bodybuilders and got him some money. So that's. Uh... I think there's a video too. There's a longer version of that yeah. way. Bob and Sean come in later, and Sean's like, "And Wayne, why is it that people out of the top ten don't even get any money?" And Wayne's like, "Sean, you weren't here. We've already addressed that. Lee thinks uh, that's taken care of." Sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. Um, another question about. Um, judging the sport and judging the athletes striated glutes i know back in in your day that wasn't an emphasis but do you think it's overemphasized to have the striated glutes do you think it's very, very much so like i never had them maybe when i won the universe i sort of had them but to me it was like as long as your glutes are hard you know they got a square look they're not jiggly, yes. which is if you're pretty much in shape you're in yeah. shape but yeah i think too much is put on the emphasis and you know shows the one from the back really there's two yeah. back shots Three double bicep and lat spread. What about side tricep, side chest, front double bicep, front lat spread, ab shot? So to me, it's like if you're winning all those shots, yeah. but your back's a little off just a little bit, but someone's back's on, but they don't have all the other shots, how the fuck do they win just because always oh, got ripped glutes? And I always told people when I was young, I would look at Tom Platz's legs, yeah. Eddie Robinson's arms. Like I liked all the body parts. They were, yeah, I saw Gaspari, but I never once went, fuck. I want to get an ass like a spari. I got Lampus yeah. was never on my fucking ass. I was just like on all the other body parts. So 
I think they go over a bit with the because I've seen guys with shredded hamstrings and their glutes aren't shredded, but they're yeah. still tight. So to me, that's good enough. And my opposing trunks always covered my ass anyway. I wasn't yeah. one of these guys to rip them up like I'm wearing a thong at a yeah. Chippendale show. So to me, now so there's like so much emphasis on that. Oh, he's got a ripped ass, but where's his calves? I remember I said, like, what was I on a podcast not long ago? And I remember at one show, there was Dexter and I, and we're on stage, we're doing the rear shots, and Dexter yeah. leans over and goes, mm, mm, pats me on the bum and goes, so I just bent down, patted him on the calves and went. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's just it's just weird that so much emphasis is put on glutes, and that's, yeah. uh, it's like crazy. Yeah. All right, well, I have another question. I've been going pretty long here. This is good. Um, yeah. Lots of questions for you. But um, your your thought on the progression of bodybuilding over the past 20 years, has it really improved that much or is it kind of still just the same but more on social media? That's the only thing that's really changed about it. More on social media, I think, and we've got more access to it. But, you know, there's always those things where the 90s better, this and that. And you can look at it and say, yeah, the 90s were probably better as far as shows go and more guys doing more shows and stuff like the conditioning sometimes yeah. could have been better at a lot of these shows because back then, you know, we didn't have social media. We couldn't make money from YouTube. We couldn't, like, somebody like Sam back in that day would not make any money no. just being Sam. Yes. So back then, when we all competed, there was magazine contracts, supplement contracts, and to keep those contracts, you had to come in looking good. You had to improve. You had to be somewhat special because if you didn't your contract was cut so everyone was always fighting to come in great because they ever wanted their contract to get bigger they wanted to get re-signed they wanted to get the magazines if you look good you get the cover of a magazine so i think there's more competition there to come in looking good just to keep your contracts and in, in magazine or supplements whereas now you can just look good and like i said sam does a lot of people do it never compete but probably make more money than the guys who are competing today and that's why you see guys today, I hate it when they're young. You know, Nick does it and he has like purposes or whatever his coach tells him, but mm. some of these guys only do one show. I'm like, yeah. I did 11 shows one year. The majority of us back in the day did all yeah. these three or four shows, which helps promoters. And to me, yeah, the IFBB, I think, should have in a contract. If you're an IFB athlete, yeah. you got to do a minimum of three shows. Unless yeah. you're Mr. Olympia, okay, you might get a pass, but even a Mr. Olympia should do too, do the Arnold as well. Because it makes the sport better. If you know Mr. Olympia is going to be there or, you know, these big names are going to be at certain shows, the promoter makes money, it brings more money. And having these guys exactly. sit out for one show, to me, it's just dumb. And well, it's not. It's like you apply that to tennis. Think, apply that to anything else. Yeah. Are they having one tennis match a year and that's it? No. no. They're all over they the circuit. The Bowl. They won yeah. the Super Bowl. They don't sit out all year and go, hey, we're just waiting for the next Super Bowl to come around. No. You've got to fucking work your way up and get there again. Every sport does. You yeah. can't win the heavyweight boxing and go, I'm just going to wait around the whole year and when the title comes up, let me know. So yeah, it's just weird that, you know, and then people go, yeah, but it's not healthy. I'm like, really? It's like, to me, it's almost like a double-edged sword. Look look at me in the off-season. Yeah. I, I, I don't still compete a lot. I might do three shows at the beginning of the year and some at the end, but in between, me being off-season, 285, I would take hardly any gear in the off-season, if any, but still be 285 sitting around, train once a day, you know, just eat. Yeah. And now get some of these guys who never come off. Yeah. They sit around overweight, taking drugs, train once a day, hardly no cardio. So what's what's un what's unhealthy? At least if you're getting ready for a show, yes, you're using gear, yeah. but you're doing cardio, you're eating clean food. So, you know, yeah. it's like almost like which which is worse. So yeah. I think guys today just get like I said, because they're making money not competing. They, yes, they make money competing, but while they're not, they're still making money. You know, that drive isn't really there like it was before. And yeah. it's like, if you're just doing one show, say you fuck up. That's one show you fucked up on. The more shows you do, you learn more about your body. You know how your body's yes. going to respond. It's all a learning process, and especially while you're young. You should be out there doing as many shows as you can. But I think the IFBB should have in their contracts a minimum of three shows a year. Because like I said, it helps the sport. Yes. If you're going to pick a show at the beginning of the year, and then maybe pick two at the end of the year. So you do have a break. If you can yeah. pick them when you want them, but it should be a free minimum helps the promoter it's going to sell more tickets it's going to bring more money in so i just think my audience and look at it now now that only want the first one qualifies if you're if you're picking shows you've got to pick the show where you think you got a chance back in the day you know flex used to do a lot of shows chris would do a lot of shows but luckily then sometimes the top three qualified but half the time you've got oh there goes first place he's in it no one's going to beat him so you know 
it's just crazy that they just sit out there. I, I like that. I like that idea. I like that. Antonio's going to New York. Nick yeah. Walker's probably going to win that. Yes. So he's not going to qualify, and no one else is going to qualify. So it's like he could have qualified maybe in one Detroit. The Detroit show. Yeah. So. He, he most likely would have won the Detroit show. So it's like, I like that idea, Lee. I like that idea where you're standardizing the IFBB. If you want a pro card, mm -hmm. you're going to be a professional. You're going to compete in the circuit. You're going to do three shows a year. Oh, yeah. That's the standard. That's what qualifies mm -hmm. you to become a pro. That would change the game. For, for men's physique, mm -hmm. classic physique, bikini, all these fucking, it'd be, the shows would be exactly. a lot busier. Yeah. No, no, I said, why did I do it? It's like, yeah, you can't force them. But as like I said, if you're going to be professional, these are the rules. Imagine, like you said, if any other sport did that in tennis, and oh, I'm only going to do one Masters. It's like yeah. golfing, tennis. Like I said, and they a are circuit. Old, but, yeah, and like I said, they put their bodies through hell. Even baseball, you know, the NFL and that. It's like you know Training. they bash into each other all the time. They can't just go. I'm going to play one game. No. So it's like you're being paid. All you do is eat, sleep, and train. Get fucking out Get there and compete more and do shit it's like, like i said it's good for the sport overall yeah. but i don't know why they haven't implemented it so i yeah. have to get on the three three shows at least yes. unless you're mr olympia then maybe one but you know i think it would be great yeah. if mr olympia had to do the arnold or pick one show even if it's a small show imagine mr olympia turned up to compete in it the crowd would be like, oh, fuck yeah you. it would yeah, just be like, oh, he's gonna win but then again he might not win so imagine if mr olympia wins the olympia then he goes to new york and gets beat yeah it's like oh fuck he got second or third, but then come to the Olympia, now it's got this hype. Can right. he get his title back? You know, yeah. it would be like, remember Schumacher would always win the thing. You know, like yeah. fucking five races left and Schumacher's already the champion. You're like, oh, that's fucking boring. It's yeah. more fun when there's competition to go yes. back and forth. And Like this Olympia would be good this year because you've got Derek going in it, Mr. Olympia. Yeah. You've got Hardy who's been Mr. Olympia going in it. If Rami comes back, he's been a Mr. Yeah. Olympia. Brandon Curry, so if it's he's good. in it. Olympia could have at least four previous Mr. Yeah. Olympias on the stage battling it out again, which would be great. But it'd be good to see those guys throughout. That's why I thought it was great that Hardy did the Arnold Classic. That was yeah. great. So yeah. yeah, it just made the show that much better and more exciting. And um, mm -hmm. these shows are are getting dwindled down. The, there's maybe three good guys in the show, and then that's it. There's not even six guys in a, in a class. Like when we talk about the nineties being better, like I said, yeah. it wasn't that guys today aren't in condition it's just that the depth of the conditioning was better Deeper. you could go to any show the arnold classic it was almost like the olympia lineup minus mr olympia yeah. you could go to the iron man and some of these shows from first to tenth was all you know up there whereas now some of the shows after the top three like you said it's like yeah. i don't like to call them second tier pros because they're not if you're a pro on that stage you deserve to be there yes it's just that your conditioning might be off to the guy or this guy might be a little bit better so i don't like saying first tier second tier it's like because anyone really on any given day can win a show if you come in off that guy you call on second tier can suddenly beat you you're like well, how the fuck did that happen you know yeah. so yeah i just yeah. think they should be made to beat more so yeah i agreed agreed uh, good uh jay Mannion, if you're watching <laughs> maybe that's a good yeah. idea to consider to spice things up for uh the circuit and the IBB. Bob, Bob, yeah, trip, get on the bob yeah, but I, I, I can talk to Bob. I'll, I'll mention that and then just throw that idea. Out. But uh, Lee gets credit. Lee gets credit that, for that's that. That's the was... bringing up this podcast next. <laughs> um, hey, let's uh, uh, kind of a random question. I, Mac Truck also gave me some questions here. Um, oh, yeah. Well, this, I saw uh, Mac on the other shows. Actually, Mac, I saw him defend me about somebody said I was racist and he did a video saying I'm not racist. Yeah. And in my latest documentary, I asked that question to a few people, Dalek. Yeah. And Melvin Anthony, they're like, what? Lee races? Melvin's like, when I had nothing, Lee took me into his place and gave me all his food and this and that. Poor Dillett lived with me. Yeah. My brother, Kurt, I call my brother, he was black and he lived with me. I lived with him. So, yeah, yeah I might say things that are off color. And people go, whatever. I might, I might have said things about Muslims back in the day. But when I talk about Muslims, when I was talking about it back in the day, I was talking about the extremists that killed people. Yes. You know, do people know I was married to a girl who was black from South Africa that wasn't Muslim. So, yeah. if I'm a racist, I'm going to lose my. KKK membership card because I'm not. Yeah. I'm not, no. Like, no. The rules, but and I think what no. somebody said back in the day was too. They're like, well, Lee said slavery was good, and that's not what I said. I said slavery is bad. We all can agree slavery was fucking yeah. bad. But I said if you are a true descendant from a slave, I said you should thank your lucky stars. Yes, them being a slave wasn't great, yeah. but they were a slave, and when they got freed, they spread out through America and started having families, and you were born. Yeah. So you should be thankful 
that you're in America because I'm, I hate the ones that just sit back wanting handouts, reparations, mm. blah, blah, blah. I'm like, they were a slave. They got freed. Now, you have all the opportunities in the world to become great. Do yep. them proud. Make their, them being a slave that horrible thing they went through. Do them proud and yep. make something of yourself. Don't sit there going, I want handouts. Yeah. That's why we get mad. People get mad in Australia. They get mad in America when look at these people coming over from here and that the legal ones, not the illegal, but the legal ones that come into the country and they get these jobs, that Chinese people, we go, look at these people taking our jobs. And that, that's because they've come from countries that are shit, that are war torn. Yeah. yeah. And they get to America and they're like, look at the fucking opportunities we have here. We can do this and do that. They're the opportunities that if you're born in America, sadly, or Australia, we take them for granted. Yeah. But yet these people, I mean, the country, you go, man, I can be anything I want. And I always tell people, if you know, black, white, Hispanic, Chinese, if you're not where you are gay, transgender, whatever, I said, yeah. if you're not where you want to be in life today, look in the mirror. That's the person that's stopping you. No one else is out there fucking stopping you. Yeah. It's you. Whether you want to play victim, whether you want to play this or that, or make up some excuse. If you're not where you want to be in life, look in the mirror. That's the person holding you back. Yeah. Nobody else. Awesome. Awesome words from Lee Priest. Um, okay, uh, a little random question here. If you had to spend 30 days on a remote island with one pro bodybuilder, male or female, who would it be and why? Um, there's a few. Like back in the day, sadly, he's passed away, Matt Arazzo, Paul Dillette, oh, yeah. Tom Paul. Because they're all, those bodybuilders to me are so down to earth. I got on great, you know, with them and that. They just didn't take themselves serious. And mm -hmm. you could have a joke and have a laugh because... Sadly, in a lot of sports, even bodybuilding, ego is getting away. And even like I was at, when I went to the Arnold Classic or I was at an expo, when people come up to me and they're like, oh, my God, Lee Priest, you're a legend. I'm like, I'm just Lee. And that's how I see myself as just Lee. I'm no better than you. It's like you might come up and go, oh, my God, you're Lee Priest. You're a legend. I'm like, I'm just Lee. I'm like, what do you do? They might be a plumber. Well, you're probably a great plumber. I'm no different to you. Of course, yeah. I had a pro card in bodybuilding. What do you fucking do? I just yeah. lift weights. I'm a bodybuilder. Yes, okay, if I've inspired you to do something, that's great. But I'm no better than you. If, you, yeah. if you're good at your job, I'm no better. It's like when I tell people, you know, if people are in the gym like now, sure, people sit on their phones on machines and that and can annoy you. But I've never asked to this day how many sets you got because I'll just go do another exercise. And sometimes they might see someone sitting on the machine. It could be a woman. How many sets you got? Yeah, I could be getting ready for the Olympia. And I said, me getting ready for the Olympia, that's important to me. Yeah. But this woman might be there trying to lose 20 pounds. That's important to her. So my getting ready for Olympia is no more succeeds her yes. wanting to lose 20 pounds. So I'm no different than anybody else. And yeah. that's why I said I still get embarrassed when people go, oh, Lee, this and that in the airport. And they start, oh, my God, let's leave me have a photo. And people start looking. I'm like, oh, God, oh, Lee. they just want to sink down in the yeah. because Like I said, I don't see myself as Lee. I'm just a normal person. I'm generally yeah. just a stupid dickhead cracking stupid jokes. And, yeah. you know, it's like, <laughs> but awesome. if I, I said, if I find someone, yeah, I get things all the time. I was going to take my life, and then I heard you talk about suicide. That, that's a good thing, but like I said, it doesn't make me better than anybody else. So. No, 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 that's awesome. Um, another question from Mac Truck. Uh, what's your your favorite, your dream car, bike, or truck? Because I, I know Mac Truck likes he has a chopper and stuff like that. But... So many, had so many cars. Yeah, you know, right now I've got an old six eight Camaro. I like the old classics, but. When I've been through, like I said, I pretty much had every. I've never had a, my friends had a Lamborghini Hurricane. I've been in that. I like him. But if I could have, if someone said Lee could only have one, yes, I'd probably get go back to my H1 Hummer. Because, like I said, yeah, it's not as I remember that. I remember that. It's cool. It's it's tough looking. It's cool. Yeah, it can go anywhere. It can go on a freeway. So that's why I used to say, if I had a Porsche, I could beat you. I said, yeah, you can beat me on the freeway. But what if we go through the water and the mud or in the desert? You're fucked. So yeah. it's like. I just love that Hummer type thing because it just felt yeah. good and it was fun to drive like a yeah. tank on the road. So if, if I had to pick one, it would be that one. But yeah. when it comes down to other cars, it's like, I don't know, because I said I've had Dodge, Ford, Chevrolet. I'm not these where people are strictly one. Can only yeah. be a Chevy, fuck Ford. It's like, I've never yeah. been like that. If, if it, if, oh, I've had Maseratis, I've had Mercedes, BMWs. So I don't, I don't really have a favorite, but my favorite, like I said, if I, if I could pick one, it would be the H1 Hummer. When it comes to others, I'm like, if it looks good at the time and it's quick and I like the look of it, I like the sound of it, then as I said, my 68 Camaro said that old classic look at sounds. Because like I said, even the newer cars now, you take them out. To me, it's like when I had my Mustang, the other one, it was supercharged, over 700 horsepower. 
it sounds great, but it sounds like it's just exhaust. Mm-hmm. If you are in those old cars, when they start up, it sounds like the cars come to life. Yeah. Like the engine, you can yes. hear the engine. Wherever it's just because the car's all made of metal or something, it just sounds like the car's alive. Whereas the newer cars sound good, but it just sounds exhaust noise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You start up one of those old classics, it's like, boom, like yes. the whole, the whole thing so, shakes. Yeah. And then yeah. Too, when you look at movies, born in, born in 60 seconds, John Wick, any yeah. car movie where they have the newer cars, always the classic cars, the centerpiece. And like, I've had all those newer cars and I'll be driving them around. People go, huh, but you drive an old classic around. People are like, yeah, oh, they man, really I'm look. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Talk about the movies. That's a question about mine. I know you're a movie buff. What's, your mm-hmm. all time, it's probably hard for you to answer this. It's your all time favorite movie. If you had to suggest a movie, oh, I said, um, <laughs> when it comes, I get that asked a lot. What's your favorite movie? Your yeah. favorite food? I said, I can't have one. And if you, if I pick one, that to me, it's like setting a limit. And it's like, because there's so many good action ones. You could say John Wick, or you could say Gladiator. They're all yeah. in different categories. See, so it's like, what's your favorite horror? Well, I like Jason movies. I like the Halloween movies. I just like Stand the Omen or some. Yeah movie that doesn't have a se- sequels and stuff it could just be a great horror movie for the time so yeah you know then when they say favorite movie too i'm like well there's action horror drama real life comedy i said i guess if it has one, one, you were stuck on an island and you had to pick one movie to take to the island which movie would that be oh god i probably wouldn't take any i'd just go make scene castles because i couldn't pick one because if i picked an action one i'd be like i well, now i can't watch that funny you know, Talladega Nights again. I just yeah. got to watch this fucking movie. Now it might be my favorite, but if I'm stuck on the island yeah. in a month's time. And I fucking hate this movie because it's the only thing I can watch. So yeah. I wouldn't take any build sand castles and fish. I guess. <laughs> I thought you posted the the Dread Deadpool and Wolverine. That looks fucking oh, sick. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I yeah. like that too because I think in that one too. I think um, of course Disney took over. I think Ryan Reynolds makes a bit of fun of it. He doesn't. It's not like a being our raid it's going to be good because he makes fun of all the woke stuff so yeah that preview looks really good and when i posted it too, i had to laugh because someone goes oh that wasn't a good preview they used the word fuck too much i'm like oh god how sensitive are you it's like it's it like that's what makes it funny sometimes it's like, yeah, you know, it's like i used to watch those movies with was it betty white and them and stuff like that i always used to find it funny when you watch a movie and somebody older swears all the time yeah. it just looks like those grumpy old men movies when they yeah. swear because good you're not used to seeing it come out. No, of we're not. Yeah, person. I think it makes it funny. And I don't know these people really say they get so sensitive. I even said to my wife the other day a movie was coming on. And I just paused it. I said, "Look at that." Back in my day, we had R-rated, eighteen and above. That was it. Yeah. Now I forget what movie it was. It says this movie contains blood, gore, violence, sex scenes, extreme sex scenes, nudity. I'm like, fuck me, yeah, I've got a catalog of what's in this fucking movie. That's like bloody hell. It's like. Can't we just watch a movie? Yeah, movie right. being, this could affect you this yeah. way or that way. Yeah, oh, right. shit. Yeah. No, man. Well, uh, last question here. I'll wrap it up for you. It's been a great interview, long interview, which I appreciate. <laughs> and um, this is a question from Mac as well. Why do you mm-hmm. have so many cats and dogs? And I know oh, I, shit, I, I can answer that too. I've always loved them. When I in California, I had a fair bit of property. I had 12 dogs at one stage yeah. just fostering that. So, I've always loved animals from a young age, and I volunteer at the animal shelter and yeah. stuff. So, but just something about animals that just seem pure. And like I said, you have a dog or a cat, and my cats are almost like dogs. They, you know, yeah. some people have cats, and when they come out, is when they want to get fed. But it's the way you raise them and treat them and stuff. And some people just treat cats like okay, I got a cat, but they never paid attention like they yeah. do a dog. But if you give the cat the same attention, it's all over you. And my cats like. I always sometimes get like get away, but I'm thinking I can't do that because the cat's showing me affection. It'd be like having a girlfriend when she wants to hug you, uh, go away, go yeah. away. After a while, she's going to shit with you. So right. I let them come on me and stuff and they sleep on the mm-hmm. Even last night, I went to the toilet, come back to bed. I'm getting in bed, I get a cramp because I'm trying to put my leg around one cat, not this dude, the other cat. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like <laughs> fucking cat. But you know, I just mm-hmm. put up with it. But yeah. you know, I just love them because you, know, you can be having the shittiest day sometimes and they come up to you and give you attention and you just sort of relax or. I don't really get anxiety, but sometimes if I get worked up over something, I might just go lay on the bed, I'll be patting the cat, just hearing the cat purr, and that yeah. sort of just relaxes me. So, you know, that's why I can watch yeah. people, sadly, online, you know, watch the people, look at that person, killing that person. Yeah. Beat them. I'm just like, I just be like, oh, you fucking idiot. But if I see someone, like I said, abusing animals, I'm just like, you. to me, abusing animals like abusing a kid or a child. It's a baby, it's like it says no. Yeah. The thing of animals, I've seen animals get abused, kicked in that, 
and the dog will come back to the person wagging its tail. Because they don't head. understand. They're like, what the fuck are you doing to me? Yeah, yeah. I just think why people abuse, isn't that what Daddy Oli did and other people? I just don't see why abusing an animal or, like I said, even if you're going to, people have kids and abuse them, like, if you don't want to be a parent, give them up for adoption or give them, you know, when you, you know, some people, when they have a baby, they don't really want it. Then, mm -hmm. you know, give it up to a family that does. Why? Have yeah. that child, you got to just treat it like shit, neglect it, or same thing. Don't get an animal. You know, we all get there's people that oh, look at a pretty puppy, pretty kitten. Yeah, but then it grows up. Oh, it's not cute anymore. Then they just neglect it and leave yeah. it somewhere. So I don't get that. So, like I said, getting an animal is like a big thing, a big decision. If you go because you got to look after it, it's going to be in your life for maybe 10, yeah. 15 years or more. But so you got to take care of it, not just a, a whimsical thing where you know some people get things. Look at this cute. Look at me. Instagram. Yeah. I got a little cute dog. Cute, cute, cute. Yeah. And then, yeah. So if, you, if you're going to take an animal on, you got to realize it's a big responsibility and stuff. So maybe start yeah. your people start with the goldfish first. If you can't take care yeah. of the goldfish, don't get a dog. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm team cat for sure. And when I was growing up, my mom was like a bit of a cat lady, so we had three or four cats mm -hmm. all the time. So I'm totally. I got, I got it's like. I had six, but then two weeks ago, my wife went outside. She just had a few drinks. She comes back with a cat. I'm like, where'd you get a cat for? I saw it across the road. I said, what, are you stealing cats now? She goes, no. I said, take it back. And then the next day it was raining. And I come back from the gym about 5 a.m. And I saw it under the car in the rain. So I got it, took it inside, told my wife I saw yeah. that cat again. So I took it to the vet and had a microchip in it. They scanned it. And they said, it comes from Carrington. That's like a couple of k's away from me. Oh, wow. In America. And they contacted the lady, and the lady's like, oh, I gave that cat to my daughter like four years ago, and her daughter was living down on my street somewhere. Yeah. But she moved out, left the cat, and the people that she left it with just threw the cat outside. So yeah. that lady who originally owned it got a hold of my wife, and she thanked us, and then she come and just signed the papers over to us. The cat's like 14 years old, and yeah. now it's on the bed, living its okay. life, it's having a good time. I don't know how long it's going to live for being an older cat, but yeah. It looks a lot better now. It's being fed and that. So, yeah, yeah she signed it over to us. She came and came to the house a couple of days ago. And goes, oh my god, looks so good and that. So yeah, I just so uh, now I've got seven cats. <laughs> oh wow, nice. Yeah, man. That's Every time I go to the pet shop, sometimes the pet shop. Pet shop. Has, you um, should you should start a, a pet shop. Yeah, it oh, would blow they up. They have like adoptions there. Every time I go there, my wife's yeah. like, just get the dog food. Don't come back. Because <laughs> sometimes I'll send a photo. Look at this cute cat. But she's got a thing like me now. Like kittens always get adopted. If I see an older cat there that's like 10 or that, because people are like, oh, it's old. Yeah. They don't get as, you know, the adoption. Yeah. The cat before that one, Panda, it was 10 years old. And I went to the pet shop once it was there. like, oh, what a cute cat. I went up, paddled it, and grabbed my finger. It's just holding onto it, purring. And I, I, didn't, I went, oh, it's nice, but I can't get it. I went back like four weeks later. It was still there. The only cat there, the kittens were gone. Yeah. I said, oh, I see that cat still there. What's going to happen? I'll probably send it to Sydney. Get euthanized, mm -hmm. caught the wife up to his cat. I'm bringing it home. So I brought awesome. that cat home. If I go into pet shop, people are like, How's Panda going? I'm like, Panda's doing great. Yeah. I got a whole front room in there. Oh, it's full of his. I got a couple of thousand dollars worth of cat towers. Uh, okay, just okay. Like okay. <laughs> you needed to do a cat tower like tour. And I don't know if you've already done that. Maybe you're done, but I'm, it'd be cool to see yeah. that. I know. It's like so I said, the cats get spoiled, the dogs get spoiled. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, man, at least I uh, appreciate you coming on the show and taking yeah, the time to shoot the shit and uh, hope to have you back on in the future. Come on and chat the Mac. Yeah, we'll have do the Matt, the Matt Mac show, the new show we just launched. So yeah. definitely we'll have you on the Matt Mac show. All right. All right, man. I, I appreciate I you. I I'm, sort of, I'm pretty racist. I hear. So I don't know if I my, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that too with Mac. We'll talk about that. All right. All right, man. Appreciate you, brother. Oh, thank right. you. Thank you. Talk soon. Peace. Bye.